Who doesn't like a delectable chicken parm sandwich, juicy meatball sub, or any of the other delicacies you can put between two pieces of bread for a sub sandwich? Unfortunately, there is approximately zero recipes on the internet for a high protein French baguette. Today, we change that forever. The baguettes we make for this recipe take very little effort to make, only include a few ingredients, and will give you enough bread to make eight sandwiches to eat throughout the week. And make sure you stay till the end of the video so I can show you how you can have a fresh baguette months after you initially make it. Let's get into it. To get this recipe started, grab a very large bowl, and I mean very large bowl, and into it add 600 grams of bread flour and 100 grams of vital wheat gluten. Please note, it is important for a bread recipe with such high protein content to have a quality bread flour, so I recommend one such as the King Arthur brand. All of their products are top of the line and will help the final baguette become the highest quality it can possibly be. Also, I know people will ask if you can make these without vital wheat gluten, and yes, you can, but then they are just regular baguettes. Vital wheat gluten has as many grams of protein per serving as protein powder and is a natural protein found in wheat, so flour and vital wheat gluten go hand in hand. Back to the recipe. Using a whisk, blend the flour and wheat gluten together so the baguettes have even more flavor throughout. Then take a glass and pour 500 grams of lukewarm water into the bowl. I would say the water should be around 80 to 90 degrees. Using a spoon, start mixing everything together. Once it starts to become a dry and shaggy mess like this, rinse your hand under water and get it nice and wet. Using your soaking wet hand, mix in the dough until there are no more dry parts. This should take about one to two minutes. If the dough starts sticking to your hand or you need a little more water, not a problem. Grab a bread scraper, get any excess dough off your hand, and rinse it under water again. Then get back to work until you don't see any more dry flour. Once it looks like this, Top your dough with 16 grams of salt. I know this sounds like a lot of salt, but for the amount of bread we are making, it is the correct amount. Why not add in the salt with the flour and wheat gluten, Nick? Great question. If we added the salt in beforehand, it could mess up the auto lease process and is honestly food science stuff that is way over my head. However, putting the salt on top won't affect the auto lees and will start combining with the dough by itself as it sits. Cover your bowl and set a timer for 20 minutes. Wait, why is there no yeast in the bread mixture. As I mentioned, what we are doing is called an autolyse. An autolyse occurs when flour and water are mixed and the dough sits while it fully hydrates. Letting it sit like this not only essentially makes the dough knead itself so we don't have to, but makes the task of lengthening the dough much easier later in the recipe. Now is where the yeast comes in. Similar to the dough, the yeast needs time to hydrate as well. Take a high-sided cup or bowl and put 50 grams of warm water into it along with 15 grams of yeast. Using a spoon, mix the yeast around until all the little granules are wet. Now let it sit until the timer goes off. Once 20 minutes has passed, take a spatula and get all of that yeasty mixture into the bowl. This is going to be the most effort you have to put into the entire recipe because mixing something into an already hydrated dough is difficult. You will definitely get a hand and forearm pump by the end of this, but don't worry. It only lasts a few minutes. Get your hand soaking wet like you did for the first part and start squeezing the dough through your fingers, then move to another part and squeeze again. I like to pretend that this is Play-Doh and I try to compress it as much as I can with each squeeze. I continue that process while occasionally flipping it around and then I start squeezing again. This usually takes about four to five minutes and you will be able to tell when it is finished when everything is homogenous or looks alike. If it looks like a shaggy mess similar to this, you are in the right place and not now it is time to cover again for 30 minutes. Although this recipe is technically easy to make, it does take time. Just like fat equals flavor, for this recipe, time equals flavor, and there's really no shortcut for it. That is why instead of making one baguette, we are making several in one go. This is perfect for a Sunday meal prep while you are prepping other recipes or you are just relaxing at the house watching football. They need very little effort and attention, but every once in a while, we'll need a simple stretch and fold or need to be rolled out. Speaking of which, 30 minutes later, our dough has gassed up a bit and it is time to do a simple stretch 
stretch and fold to tighten the gluten network in the dough. For this, wet your hand again so the dough doesn't stick to you. Then take one side of the dough, stretch it as far as you can, and lay it across itself. Turn the bowl 90 degrees and do it again three to four more times until all the dough has been stretched. Flip the dough, slide your hand underneath it, and pull in a circular motion towards you. Repeat this process until you get a nice, tight ball. Cover again for 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, the dough is ready for its last stretch and fold. We are going to repeat what we just did to a T. Stretch and turn until everything has been stretched. Flip it over again and round the dough into a nice, taut ball. You will notice that the dough is now smooth and looks like it has been kneaded even though all we did was pull on it a few times. This is the beauty of an auto lease. Quickly spray the top of your dough with oil just in case your dough rises too high, <laughs> kind of like mine did for the making of this video, and then cover. This is the perfect opportunity to go to the gym, watch some TV, catch some rays, play with your puppy, or eat some low calorie ice cream because the dough needs an hour and a half to two hours to rise. 90 minutes later, our dough is fully gassed up and ready to be separated into individual baguette balls. Lightly dust both your work surface and the top of your dough with flour, degas it, and flip it onto the table. Using a bread scraper, cut the dough into four pieces that weigh about 310 to 320 grams each. For continuity purposes and a nice YouTube thumbnail, I weigh these out to make sure they are about even, but it is A-OK -okay if you just eyeball it and move on. Grab one of your pieces of dough and to prevent sticking, spray your hands with oil. For some odd reason, I decided to use flour here instead, but anyways, push the dough outward to get any big air bubbles out. I like to make this into a squarish, rectangularish shape. Then I fold the sides of the dough, followed by the top and the bottom. This dough is pretty sticky, so so this should easily stay together while folding. From there, I flip the dough over and use both of my hands to shape the dough into a tight ball. The surface should look smooth like this, and you need to make sure the bottom is sticking together. Because of the high amount of protein, the dough likes to separate as you can see here, so if the bottom starts to come apart, keep pinching it together until it forms one cohesive mass like this. I then put my finished baguette ball off to the side and cover with a damp tea towel. I repeat this process until until all four balls are formed. If you end up having trouble with the dough sticking to the table, you can use the dough scraper to loosen it up and then fold your dough in. When finished, place the dough balls near each other and cover. From here, we have to wait about 15 to 20 minutes to give the dough a little time to relax before we roll them out. Just an FYI, this recipe was highly inspired by Brian Lagerstorm's beginner baguette recipe. When I made it with the Vital Wheat Gluten and it was girlfriend approved, I knew I had to make a video for the channel. Aww. Huge shout out to him, and if you haven't checked out his channel, you should. His channel will be linked in the pinned comment below. Now that it's been 20 minutes, we will get the baggies ready to bake. Take a sheet pan like we used in the sheet pan pizza recipe and put parchment paper down. Use a couple light oil sprays on the parchment just to make sure nothing sticks. Put that off to the side. Lightly dust your work surface, grab one of your balls of dough, and put it in front of you with the bottom side facing up. This is very important so your final product looks smooth and aesthetic. Trust me, I did it the opposite way in the testing process, and no bueno. Put a little bit of oil on your hands and start pressing the dough out. The goal is to get it into a rectangular shape while also getting a lot of these massive air bubbles popped. Mine usually end up being about 7 to 8 inches long and 5 to 6 inches wide. Then take the top of your dough and fold it over like this. Using the tips of your fingers, push the end of the dough into the crease similar to the way I am. You will keep slowly rolling the dough down towards yourself, pressing the seams together with each roll. I personally like to work left to right to make sure I am rolling the dough as evenly as I can. While doing so, make sure you are popping any bubbles along the way like this one here, here, and here. Once you get to the end, seal your roll by pinching along the line and put a very light dusting of flour on it so the baguette is easier to stretch out. Then put the sealed side down and using both of your hands, start in the middle of the dough and apply pressure down and out, trying to keep the seam side facing down the entire time. If the seam does show though, <laughs> it is not a big deal and will taste just as good once baked. Each time you roll it out, use a little more pressure and as you get to the end of the dough, apply even a little more pressure 
refresher so you can get that signature baguette taper. This should take about three to five rolls to get right. You will know you are finished when you have a baguette that is about 12 to 14 inches in length. My personal gauge is to make sure the dough touches each end of the sheet pan. This isn't required, but again, it just helps me get bread that is as uniform as possible being the rookie baker that I am. Put your baguette on the sheet pan, cover with another sheet pan or tea towel, and repeat the process until all four of your baguettes are finished. A tip I learned while working at Jimmy John's is to also make sure your baguette is as straight as possible on the sheet pan before it rises. Even if the baguette has a tiny curve, once it proofs, the bread will be crooked. Now your baguettes will need one final rise for about 60 to 90 minutes. Again, feel free to go do whatever you have to do, but this is the one rise when you should make sure you are back before the 90 minute mark because you don't want to overproof your final product. Once ready, take off that sheet pan and look at these beauties. They have risen about 75% and you know they are ready if you poke them and they bounce back ever so slowly. All we have to do now is spray these with water. For that, I have this really awesome spray bottle that distributes the mist evenly, but you can use a regular spray bottle from Home Depot or Walmart. This is important not only for a crispy crust, but also a crust that isn't burnt before it's done. We also want to score the baguettes, aka make cuts in them, so air can release as it's baking. You can do this with a serrated knife or a bread lame, which is what I have, and it's essentially a razor blade with a handle on it, and it only costs a couple dollars. You can either cut the baguettes every two inches or you can cut them right down the middle. Down the middle is a little bit easier for someone inexperienced since it is only one long cut. I am not great at scoring myself as you can see and prefer right down the middle but admittedly a cross does look a little bit more dope after being baked. I then load them into a preheated 450 degree oven which also has a small cast iron pan in it preheating as well. Once I place the bread in the oven I will take about five to six cubes of ice and throw it on the cast iron that is placed below where the baguettes are baking. This will create a steam that will cause the bread to have a better rise while cooking. After about 15 minutes, I flip the sheet pan around and move the baguettes that are on the outside to the inside and vice versa. This will make sure that the oven cooks the bread evenly. Many home ovens are hotter in the back than the front and the same goes for the outside of the oven versus the middle. I pull these beauties once I get a deep golden brown color like this, which is about another 10 to 15 minutes in the oven. As you can see, these are a perfect golden brown with a thin but crunchy crust and a soft, slightly chewy interior. Now, any baguettes that you will use in the next couple of hours, you can leave out. However, this is where the meal prep comes in. Cutting these baguettes in half and putting them in the freezer will lock the freshness in and prevent them from spoiling. To store them, simply cut them in half once they are cooled off and wrap them in cling wrap. Once they are all wrapped, throw them in the freezer. Then, when Whenever you want one, preheat an oven to 350 degrees, unwrap it, and throw it right into the oven. After 15 minutes, they are all the way cooked through and are arguably better than when they were first made. The entire outside has a thin but very audible crunch. and the inside of the baguette is just as soft as when it was first made. After about 30 minutes in total of actual work, you now have eight seven inch baguettes ready to go at a moment's notice and can be used in a variety of ways, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. While you are prepping this, you can also prep my barbecue chicken sheet pan pizza for an easy lunch all week, which you can check out here. It has 40 grams of protein per slice and reheats in the air fryer as good as new in four minutes. Until next time, juices. Yeah.